Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Rhea. Welcome to Karma's My Bitch, a podcast about love, sex, connection, abundance, joy, purpose, peace, and how life isn't simply the stories we tell ourselves. So before we really get into this, I just want to say that we do not judge anyone for their chosen religion or any choice that they make when it comes to their relationship with their God, whatever that is. What we're actually focusing and discussing today is the construct itself in which religion is defined within. And a lot of the podcasts we've been doing before, we start with something very personal Mm -hmm. and we show how actually it's an internalization of something quite big. In this podcast, we're doing the opposite. Mm -hmm. We're taking the big first and we're showing how it affects you internally. Mm -hmm. I definitely think the religion forms part of your identity in a lot of ways, even if it is not having one. It's been so ingrained for so long that we've either been forced to embrace some version of it or some idea of God or not at all. A lot of my generation has stepped back from religion in Mm -hmm. a lot of ways. What's interesting is that in doing so, we've lost the light of religion, Mm -hmm. but we've kept the shadow. Guilt, shame, punishment, all those things are ingrained somehow in us and we apply them to our world today, but we don't have the benefits that religion brings. I mean, historically, religion has always been about leading the sheep. It was a version of love, but it really was not unconditional love. It was more fear-based. It was, life is hard now, but there is heaven and there is hell. And so there was always this philosophy that everything is about suffering. Life is about suffering. Everything that you do, because somebody else suffered for you and sacrificed for you. And that very notion to me defined so many other relationships as a result. To earn love, I must suffer. And whether it's the love in this lifetime or the love in the afterlife. Well, it's about those rules, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That we were talking about uh, in unconditional love. If I follow these rules, Mm -hmm. I will go to heaven. Therefore, I am worthy of being in heaven. Therefore, I'm worthy of love. It does make me uncomfortable to just say, religion out with the bathwater because there are a lot of people and people very close to me from many different religions who not only believe but are kinder gentler more compassionate people as a result Mm -hmm. so i would struggle to say that religion is purely about controlling the masses i would say instead that you can take the positive messages from religion and apply them to your life Mm -hmm. in a way that makes it happier but you have to have the discernment to know which parts are written by men in order to control and which parts are actually beautiful concepts that add value to your life. As you said earlier, that the positive things about religion, which I actually think are less about religion, because I see religion as the construct. It's the rituals. It's the vessel in which these concepts are given to us. Very much. Which without them, to me, creates more freedom. You didn't need forgiveness or compassion. And you can exercise that. It doesn't come from anyone but yourself. And I think the more consciousness we have, the more we understand that to be true. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that religion didn't serve a purpose. It certainly served a purpose. It was quite necessary Mm -hmm. in order to bring order to chaos. But what we're finding is you said that there was too much shadow. All the shadow that had to do with religion has surfaced to the point now where we can't ignore it. It perpetuates people's fears in order to maintain its power. Well, the fear of being punished, the fear of being wrong, Mm -hmm. the fear of being not good enough. Well, the fear of not getting into heaven not being loved enough to make it. And I guess that does mean that you surrender your autonomy because you don't do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You do what you think you should do instead. Absolutely. And that means that you're losing that connection with yourself and you're not honest with yourself. So you're not necessarily maybe getting the lessons and the experiences that you need to grow. Oh, not at all. Your growth is in a very limited path. Well, I guess you could just argue that like the traditional family roles, that was governing our real life. But religion was there to govern our spiritual life. As we're breaking out of the archetypes of this kind of traditional role doesn't work for me within the home, maybe this kind of traditional way of thinking about spirituality doesn't work for me either. God is sold as this sort of father figure, which we know is such a limiting idea. And if you're fortunate, then you would be on the receiving end of many Mm. blessings. But if you weren't, then that's your Mm. fault. It's not about judging someone for their beliefs. Gosh, no. It's much more about saying, well, actually, let's look at this objectively. 
let's look at the rules yeah. and the constructs and the concepts yes. that come with mainstream religion. Yes. And when we talk about mainstream religion, we're kind of focusing on Christianity because that's what we know best. And let's just say, does that still work today? It's how religion has been interpreted, mm -hmm. how it's been imposed, and how it's been internalized. So. And how it's created barriers to our own development yeah. as a result. It's all story. The Bible is a collection of stories. <laughs> exactly. You know? yes. So let's look at some of those stories, just like the stories we tell ourselves, mm -hmm. and say, do they quite work still? Do they actually give me the map to achieving those things that I'm promised by following religion? Peace, love, harmony? Or actually, are they stopping me from doing those things? Because the way in which those stories are told are just reinforcing walls, barriers and rules that yeah. aren't really making me very happy. Yeah. Or result in the preoccupation of I should be doing more in order to yeah. achieve this goal. Yeah. It's like bargaining. Yes. It's like negotiating. Yes. It's trading. It's yes. if I do this, I get this. Mm -hmm. I now deserve this because this has happened to me. Yes. Because I've done all the work. I've suffered enough. I've suffered Therefore. enough. You know, it's always tit for tat. Very much. And, but that's how we're living in our society at the moment. Oh, yeah. Because we have lived with this for eons. We have lived with this lifetime after lifetime. I remember always having issues with that. I was a terribly religious kid because I was trying to find context for everything I was seeing and experiencing. It felt good until, until it became more academic. We had to learn more stories and we had to adopt and memorize the rules and say the prayers three times a day. There are bits of religion that are useful. Praying, for example, mm. is a good way to meditate. But the problem is, like everything else, is that when there's that rhetoric underneath everything, which is, fuck this up and we're going to fuck you up, it becomes it becomes a fear-based practice, which yes. is the antithesis of love. Yes, and I remember being taught that fear from childhood. If that shaming vocabulary stays with us, mm. or that punitive idea, or consequences. I mean, how many times did I ever say to my kids, you know, just be aware of the consequences? Which is the opposite of what we've been trying to do with this podcast, yes. which is all about as long as you know yourself, as long as you trust yourself, then you can handle anything. Very much. Whereas religion is telling you, don't listen to yourself. Listen to us. Surrender yourself because you're not capable. Yeah. I May mean, I think the basis of so much of that was give it up, surrender, and you'll be taken care of in the end. And as we talked about, surrendering doesn't help. No. Because it means giving up your power. It's recognizing that you are the higher power. You're not the higher power over someone else, but that you are really the most powerful person you could possibly know because you can do it. When you say you are the higher power, I'm like, what? And then I kind of <laughs> stop and think about it for a second. Yes. It's like, well, stories that you tell yourself define your past mm -hmm. and impact your present and your future. How you act and react to people and experiences define your present and your future. And the future is such unknown, but the only thing you can be sure of, if you are true to yourself, you'll be okay. None of that involves surrendering. All of that's quite active. So when you say higher power, I guess what you're just saying is that you are the master of your own life. Absolutely. You are the co-creator of your own life and it always comes down to your choices and no one else's so just as much as you choose to believe in a quote-unquote higher power or in a god which i do think that it's great we you know we could certainly have more people in this world believe in something some cosmic force because that level of belief really does elevate personally i'm feeling quite faithless which is ironic considering what i'm doing right now and considering how i felt in the past mm -hmm. I allow myself to question what's going on around me and my faith because it means that if I end up settling on having faith, then I know that I've really explored it. Yes. And that's why I said better to have none than have it misplaced. I'm in control of what I end up believing and I can create my own religion that is personal to me. Which is an expression of your truth. And when I said that you're better off being faithless than mm. having sort of having your faith misplaced, it's because then at least Whenever you get there, you'll have chosen that entirely and that it's not based yeah. on someone else's idea or philosophy yeah. Yeah. or how they told you to get there. It feels like allowing myself to question mm -hmm. is an act of love in itself. It is. Which means that if I eventually do make whatever choice I, I make, it's another act of love. And it's not a reactive choice. To me, what matters the most is that it's one that you've chosen, one that you've developed, and that mm -hmm. reflects your own spiritual maturity. Mm. And speaking my truth, as we know, when we talk about unrequited love, when we talk about trust, and we talk about a lot of things, speaking my truth and embracing how I feel is an act of love. So even though I thought I'd feel really lonely 
by saying I, I could be alone in this world, in this existence, and it's pretty fucking linear. Because I've chosen to honour how I feel, I'm standing by myself. And I'm not saying standing all by myself. I'm standing beside myself. Look, it makes me sad. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like something's missing. Okay. But I can't indulge it when I'm not sure. No, because I think some people run into it. They feel so out of control yeah. that what they're really doing is collapsing into fear. And when you collapse into fear, religion is often the safe haven because we're too afraid to really confront all of those issues that yeah. we were told were wrong. Yeah. If I look at what I think is wrong with me mm -hmm. and find out that it really does make me unlovable, yes. I'm going to be alone, yes. aka to hell, which is the worst possible place I could be in because I didn't deserve the unconditional love of heaven. Hopefully someone somewhere will have listened to these in sequence. And, <laughs> and you know, when we talk about Very kind much. of going dark and allowing ourselves to go to that dark place mm -hmm. and then come out of it as a more whole person, that right or wrong yeah. stops us from going dark, stops us from embracing our shadow, yeah. stops us from seeing other peoples and then stops us from having compassion. So in a weird way, all the rules that religion have given us mm -hmm. are actually the things that stop us from getting to the concepts that religion has promised us. Exactly. Peace, yeah. love, compassion. Precisely. You're yeah. always doing the best that you yeah. can. Yeah. So there, there can't be right and wrong. There's only lessons, experiences, mm -hmm. and growth. It's about losing that, again, like you said, that construct. Stepping outside of it yeah. for a while just to sort of see in question, what do I really believe in? And actually, you find more in common with the people around you who are a bit religious. That's what I found. Okay. <laughs> I'll run with that. <laughs> so, for example, when I started going on this journey and kind of looking into more spirituality stuff, you know, I would talk to my friends and my mum, who's quite religious. I talked to people around me who were quite religious in different religions. Mm -hmm. And I'd tell them what I believed. They all would agree with me. But then they'd all say it back to me in their language. Mm -hmm. And I realised that actually I could explain to someone my beliefs mm -hmm. using their language and they'd understand me. Mm -hmm. By removing the construct, what it does is it brings everyone together. It does. Because yes. we can all say them in the same language now, because we're not using our different religions mm -hmm. to make us believe that they're different. Exactly. Yeah. When they're not. No, when we know that ultimately what connects us all and what underpins our existence and what we all want is love. When we allow all of those sort of tent poles of our mm. 3D reality, one of them yeah. being religion, to crumble, then we can really recognize the light. And that light has everything to do with love. Ultimately, it's really what we carry in our hearts. And that's always going to be the us. same. Yes. Which is love, wanting love, giving love, connection, harmony, all that kind of stuff. This religion has this God and this religion has that God. To yeah. Understanding that, oh, it's really just, there's one source, one source of love. And it exists in all of us. Exactly. And that source of love that exists in all of us unites mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Which is what you like calling oneness consciousness. <laughs> I like calling love. And so when you have wholeness and oneness and love, the framework and the constructs no longer serve. They hold us back. They perpetuate the stories and the histories the radical religion that we see in the news that's putting us off religion. Mm -hmm. yes. Is that why that's happening? Yes. Because actually it's kind of calling us to say, wait a second, does this still fit? Right. We're going to show you the deepest, darkest parts of it. Yes. Rather like on a personal journey, mm -hmm. when your toxic patterns become so toxic, you have no choice <laughs> yeah. but to actually look at them and go, let's question this for a moment exactly, and yeah. see if it's still working for us. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same now with religion on a wider scale. Precisely. It's, it's a lot to stomach. And so they would rather just go entirely without. Because actually what they're doing is they're causing that separation. They're making more the us and them. You're right, I'm wrong. You don't believe in what I believe. Yeah, they've they're... held the space for separation yeah. for a long time. That yeah. was always the purpose. Our lives are a lot easier and better and kinder mm -hmm. when we see ourselves in others. Yes, when there is no separation. When there is no separation. Right. And religion is just one of the social constructs that keep perpetuating the idea of the other and the idea of punishment and the idea of black and white. Mm -hmm. And so it's time for that construct to fade away. Mm -hmm. But the, the faith below it of love, peace, compassion, harmony... To really come up that to the forefront. Connected by a cosmic force. I keep pushing back at you every time you bring up <laughs> source, cosmic force. Yes. 
because I'm having my own personal issues with it. Yes. But we see now where a lot of people don't believe in mainstream religion. Mm -hmm. They're believing in manifestation. They're believing in the law of attraction. There are a lot of concepts out there which link to a kind of cosmic universal force. Very much. That aren't in religion, that people are following. Because we're going to talk about those things. And it's important to talk about those things. Very much. And I'm really interested in talking about those things. (laughs) Well, one of the reasons we are talking about them is because you are so interested and you have a lot of questions. (laughs) Exactly. If you give too much to the external construct of religion, Mm -hmm. you're giving away your power. You can't really look at yourself and say, what do I want? What do I need? Mm -hmm. But once you're able to come into yourself and go, actually, this one, yes. This one, no. Mm -hmm. This one, kind of. Or whatever else it is. You're creating your own view of the world, but you're giving yourself back your power. Very much. And you're giving yourself back your choice. And that's going to allow you to co-create your life in the future. So I came here, I started this journey because I saw the same patterns repeating and repeating and repeating and I wanted to break them. Mm -hmm. I wanted the life that I didn't think was possible, Mm -hmm. but knew kind of it was. But I knew that that glitch, that change had to come from me. And once you come to your own truth, you can see what you really want and you can see what you really desire, Mm -hmm. what brings you true joy. What makes you fall more in love with yourself? That is how you build the life you want. We have to take the broadest perspective possible and understand what is keeping us from really grasping or seeing them objectively. And so what we've been, since episode one, has been really about question what you're fearing, sit with those fears, sit with your shadow, own yourself so that you could get to this point of can you see how you've constructed your life in order to cope with all the turmoil and chaos of this reality, in order to create a new reality? Love is the only thing in my life that I can't explain. Mm-hmm. And that's my truth. And for me, religion is having faith in the unexplainable. And for me, that's love. Thank you for listening. For more information, articles, and inspiration, find us at karmasmybitch.com and at karmasmybitch.insta. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review.